and we use different chemicals and you can see this is the radium, the, the residue that it is a red residue. That's why it's considered a red mud, it's a red residue. The iron coated is 50% inside. That's why it's very red. When you see a red soil, it means that it contains a lot of uh, uh, iron. Typically, once we have a waste, we have to perform a lot of analysis. That we can, first we need to mill the waste, we use a mill <coughs> to make this into a powder. We can use a furnace to measure typically properties like uh, moisture, uh, volatiles and uh, ash. We can have some other instruments like, uh, sorry again, this an instrument here that measures the caloric value. For example, you can have a waste and then you need to burn the waste in order to use this as a, as a fuel. If you want to use a waste as a fuel, you have to convert this into a better material. And then we measure the calorific value. For example, it has the same calorific value, it has the plastic waste or the wood. What it has better calorific value? What we can use better to run a fuel, to run an engine? Wood. 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 <coughs> Why do we use oil in a car and we don't use wood in the car because the oil it has a better calorific value it can run the car for longer time in the past they have trains that they use coal they have trains that they use petroleum if you use coal you have a lot of emissions you run the train 1000 kilometers if you have oil you can run the train for thousands of kilometers less emissions so we always try to use a material with higher caloric value, higher value that can produce more energy, more steam, something like that. But there are also different types of uh, properties or analysis that we do, especially if we want to test the material, we need to see the elemental code. The elemental code. For example, if we take a material like, uh, let me see, like uh, here, paper. The paper it is contains carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and small amounts of different types of elements. So we need to know what is the elemental composition of the paper, because if we process the paper, if we burn, for example, the paper, we know that the carbon, it will react with oxygen, we have complete combustion, it will be converted into CO2. But depending on the oxygen content, how much oxygen we need to fit the reactor. Once we know the carbon, we know exactly the amount of oxygen that we need to fit. Because if you put a lot of oxygen, you spend energy and you produce less heat. Everything is related, coming from the initial material. So we characterize the initial material in order to know the process better and understand what it will be also products. This is more or less some of the things that we do. Probably you have here about composting. Let's, let's say you take a material, you do an aerobic composting process, you produce compost, and then the, pro, the compost can be used as a soil fertilizer, soil conditioner, and so on, depending on the properties of the compost. Because if you take sludge from a wastewater treatment plant, the sludge contains pollutants inside, and the pollutants it will pollute the compost. So we need to know the level of the pollutants. There are European directives, so we need to go steps back to study the directives, to study the conversion level, and how the elements it will be transferred from the material, let's say, the initial material into the compost. There are so many different things, and every time we need to study a specific problem to provide a specific solution. All right, guys.